County Work Session to order. And uh, one of the first things we want to do is introduce Charlie Ellis and Christy Harness to come up and speak about the Family Justice Center that they've been working on and we've been working on for a little while now. And they would like to address the commission on that. So go ahead. We just kind of want to give everybody an update uh, because the Family Justice Center project is a grant that was awarded um, back in July um, to Scott County for a Family Justice Center project. Um, and the Family Justice Center project in itself is, um, it'll be a co-location of services for victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and elder abuse. So if a victim at that point needs to seek those services, um, they can come to one location um, to get connected with those services. It's not taking over um, any service that anybody else is already providing. It's just bringing everybody together in, in one location. Um, we are on track at where we're supposed to be at this point with the Office of Criminal Justice. Um, where we're at right now, and we wanted to bring this um, to the commission and let you guys give us any feedback that you may have, is by December, uh, we have to announce where our official location will be. Um, not that we have to move in, but at that point, announce our location. So if anybody is um, familiar with any building in the Huntsville area uh, that we can move into, we will have some grant monies that could help us with rent at that point. So um, if anybody is aware of any buildings, we would love to have that um, input. And if anybody has questions, Scarlett and I would, would love to answer those for you. How much space are you looking at? How much you gonna get us? Well, I You know, at this point, I mean, it's one of those things. We could, the more we have, the more services that we could put in one facility. Um, but we're not gonna turn down whatever we could get at this point. Right now, we're being housed out of SAIs, letting us because we're in that planning stage. But once we get there, we would love to be able to have um, a variety of the service providers in there with us as quickly as we can. How large staff do you have? You're looking at it. What we're looking at, though, is, um, and I don't know much about footage or any of that, so I'm just going to tell you how many offices we would need. Somebody with more knowledge than me could figure that out. But Christy would have an office there. Our domestic violence officer would have an office there. I would have an office there as magistrate. Um, someone from the shelter would have a, a space there, so that's four. Someone from the Children's Center would have a space there. Um, and we're not looking at moving the Children's Center there or moving the domestic violence shelter there, but just if someone is in need from a domestic violence situation, they would come to the Justice Center. Um, the child support would be able to come there one day a week and they could apply for their child support there so that they are not going all over our community to try to get the services. We'll need space there for a TV room because hopefully it will eventually be for orders of protections that the, the victim will be able to stay at the Family Justice Center and it will be podcast through a, a live um, session with the judge, but they won't have to be there at court so that their children would be taken care of in another room. So we're also going to need a room for the children to be at while the parents are getting the services that they need there. We'll need space for a counselor. We have a counselor that would come there and actually do some emergency counseling with the families. So how many rooms have I added up there? About eight, 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 eight plus a place for the for the children to be. Um, we hope to do group <laughs> sessions there so that if victims could come, they could get um, uh, some group sessions there and talk about other services that we may have or parenting training. Uh, so two kind of large rooms. So that's the kind of space that we hope to see. We may not have that when we first start, but we're going to soon grow out of it if we don't. But this is a grant that our county applied for and received, um, and that's why it's called a project. Um, the grant that we received gave enough money for us to hire. Uh, Christy was ultimately hired as the director of that project. 
Um, and now we're just at the stage for a little baby, either building a building or moving into a building. But they don't give us the grant money, don't say, here's $300,000 for you to build it. They expect our county to help with that, pick up that burden. So one of the things that's built into the grant is talk to survivors and get their input on where they would feel comfortable. So far, the interviews that we've done with our survivors are around the Justice Center just because they feel safe with law enforcement being close by. Um, I wouldn't rule it out necessarily. Um, it's definitely, if there's a facility that's available, we would love to go look at it. And one of the things we, I'm sorry. Actually, it might be an option, but there would have to be some ADA requirements met on that possibility. So you, how, you, this is a three-year grant, is that correct? For the planning stages, yes. We, there's built-in milestones, measurements and milestones that we have to meet. So our next biggest one is, is to announce a location. Is there money up front for renovating office space to get you a location? I, I personally think that, um, in talking with some of the OCJP people, is that if there is a location that is brought forward as a potential place for us to be, um, because of the funding, I can't seek that, but we have an advisory board that they could work toward possibly seeking funds if that is a possibility. We went around and um, we are, Scott County is the, the only county with a population less than 30,000 that's ever been granted an opportunity to do this. So for me, not only do I want to do it for the victims of our community, but also for the victims across the state of Tennessee that are from smaller rural areas, um, that maybe this will open up opportunities for them. There's one in Knoxville, Chattanooga, Memphis, Nashville, Sullivan County is on the same um, wave that we are right now. And then you have Johnson City um, as well and Jackson. Those are the family justice centers that are in the state of Tennessee at this point. Well, you, you mentioned right off the top to build and to use or rent. Is, is there rent money if you have it now? I mean, if we, the problem is with the building we've got in a space that we have available is not ADA compliant. So uh, uh, we don't have the money to make these things ADA compliant unless we can see something come back that, that paper. Right. Is that an option? That's definitely something that I can talk to OCJP um, about. And that may be something that another grant would be written for because this grant is really um, to, for training, um, to get get the plans in motion, but not to seek uh, funding. I mean, o OCJP will not let Christy actively um, do fundraisers or ask people for money. That's what the advisory board would do. Um, but it could be that um, that someone could write a grant for the county that once if we have a building and we need. Uh, monies to make it ADA compliant, there may be a grant out there that the county could write and get for this particular project, for this particular space. Um, but they told us that there's limited funds uh, within the grant that could be adjusted from different areas that they normally put it in. Um, but they would not be able to adjust that or let us know if that could be used for that until it actually we see that this is the money we need and then they may be able to move monies around but they can't answer that until they know what that need is. This actually falls back into the middle of the ground. The, uh, but it's the only thing we even have remotely though is the upstairs of the courthouse. But like I said, it's not ADA compliant. 
but it, it's something that y'all might be interested over the next few days we can take a look at it. Okay. Is it like those good videos sitting up there that you might be in your class and what you're doing is trying to do is basically combine everything that you've got in one location. Okay. We just want, and this will help to enhance some of the services that we already have. I mean, the shelter's doing a great job. Children's Advocacy Center's doing a great job. It's just being able to put all those services. If a victim leaves, sometimes they're having to travel to 15 different places to get what they need. Well, if they could come to one location and get it. And we've seen the success of that through our Children's Advocacy Center, putting all the services for children in one location. Carter, what do you really need for this group here to do now? Help you all out. We really can't do nothing until we see what's possible. Well, yeah, I know that. Well, our immediate goal is by the by December, um, the grant has given us a deadline of this is where our building will be. Either it's an existing building um, that we can say this is it, or it's a piece of land and we've got plans and we're building and this is what we're doing. Um, so that's just the immediate, the immediate range there, you know, building a new building, we all know that's probably just not going to happen. I mean, you know, we recognize that. We just, the county had gotten this grant, and it's an important grant, and we just, we didn't know how much you all knew about it as a complete group. thought y'all may have heard a little bit about it, but, um, but we're just, um, I, I do think it will make a difference for victims in our community. Uh, right now, if, um, if uh, domestic violence occurs, um, they have to go to Donnie Phillips's office and get the petition for an order of protection. And then they bring it to Oneida to meet with me and fill it out. Then they drive it back to Donnie Phillips's office to get it filed. Um, then if they need uh, shelter or housing because of domestic violence, then they're sent to the domestic violence shelter to see what those services are. <coughs> if they've got children that's been involved that needs interviewing or needs to be taken care of, then they're scheduled another day to go to the children's center. Um, if the family is separated and they need child support services, then they have to call and make an appointment and get to the child support office. Um, if they need counseling, uh, immediate counseling, then they can't get that unless they're getting it through the shelter. Only if they need housing can they get it through the shelter. So you can kind of see how they're going everywhere. And oftentimes they left without a vehicle. So therefore, we're ha having to juggle public transportation, which in our county is not easy either. But with the Family Justice Center, no one lives at the Family Justice Center. They just come there and then instead of driving in their car to come see me, they just walk down the hall. And then they just walk down the hall <laughs> to, to talk to a therapist or walk down the hall to see if the shelter has services for them. Um, so it's more readily available uh, to them with the least amount of intrusion as possible. I mean, their lives are upside down anyway at that point, but at least they feel like in the examples we've seen of where we've toured, uh, it really gives them a sense of, I can do this, instead of going back to the bad road. Thank you. Thank you. We just need to get together and get some, take a look at the upstairs today and okay. see what it takes. We've pretty much got all the figures together of what it takes to make it ADA compliant. We've done that for a while back and, uh, and see if something that y'all might be interested in. Yeah. And then we can take that, Christy can, to her um, director or her supervisor over the grant to see if there's any way those funds can be moved around. Um, it depends on how much that's going to be, too, because there aren't much, many funds to move around. <laughs> it's a pretty tight budget. But they're real excited. Our county would be on the forefront for domestic violence if we were, if we're able to successfully you know, get a building and then in a year get all those services going. Um, and we would be the model that, that they will be looking at. So I think it's super exciting. And right now too, if, if we have a victim of sexual, an adult victim of sexual assault, 
the closest place that they have to go um, is Knoxville for treatment or for uh, for services. Um, and unfortunately, we do have that occurring in our county. Christy, you all will have a sexual assault and nurse that will do the exams and everything and everything? That would be a dream. That, I mean, that, 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 is only, that, is, that is part of, eventually, there's a lot of the, the seniors that have that, um, and that would, that would definitely be a dream. Right. Right. Okay. All right. But that is something that if we were able to get that, have that room, that space, that maybe we could piggyback on the um, examiner of the Children's Center, that maybe they could spend so much time with the Justice Center and so much time there. But, um, that is a big expense, that medical examiner. I looked into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, Very big expense. But that's, you know, we we were in Milwaukee for an international conference and got to see the benefits of that. Um, and it's also a real benefit that hopefully we'll get this intercommunication to where the victims can be at the Justice Center um, on the live video stream into the courtroom. So they're still facing the person that's harming them because it's not a conviction, a criminal court setting. It's a civil setting. They can do that, um, and and they can talk to the judge and tell their side without that intimidation of him standing as close to to her as Christy is to me right now. If you've ever been in our courtrooms, you know how small they are. So um, that that will be a huge benefit. I think. And we'll be doing another trip here shortly. So if anybody on the commission would like to go uh, with us when we go view another family justice center that's already open and practicing, I would love to have you guys um, to attend with this. So just you know, give me a call or email me or something and let me know that, that you'd like to do that. I don't care. It's four two three three one nine seven eight eight three. Is there any other questions or comments? Okay. Next time you go, we're going. All right. I'd love to have you. It's not only that I have something that I want to go. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys for allowing us time. Thank you all for doing this. Yes. Thank you so very much. Um, and I'm in the phone book. I'm either under, in the SE's under Scarlett Ellis or in the E under Ellis Scarlett, but I'm there. So you can call me anytime as well. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs>
I spoke with uh, Mr. Russ earlier, and I think we're going to resolve the issue of possibly moving the gate. Is that beside the building that prevents us from getting behind the building with an ambulance or emergency service vehicle? Uh, there was a suggestion of sharing a key with that the other services back there. I don't recommend that. Uh, I don't want to be liable. I don't want our homeless shelter liable for something that might happen. Uh, so at no cost to the county, uh, volunteers uh, collected supplies, donated supplies, we'd like to move the gate that's existing back approximately 75 feet. Uh, it's the same gate, same post, same lock chain that you guys have. It's just the distance that they would have to change when they unlock the gate. Uh, but that would allow us to get, gain access to the back of our building for emergency services. Uh, and I don't know if Jim was involved, I guess, and I wasn't there whenever uh, they had to haul somebody down the steps. Uh, and the helmet shelter was quite precarious from what I hear. So if we have access to the back, it's a level movement from inside to outside or something. Has to be, someone has to be seen. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, and I have to explain to Mr. Kirby that we just basically have to go out, take a look at it, and address it, and then come back and make a recommendation. You know, it's really hard. I, I know what it's talking about, and I know what it's about keeping behind the building and going down the steps, but without seeing it, it's been a long time since I've been over there. So the best I can suggest is that. We go take a look at it and then bring it back and discuss it from there. They they talked to me about it two or three times and they also talk about fire fire trucks. Yeah, they got a fire there and there's no way they can get to the back. They have to the thing I want to the see. Way it sits. Yeah, uh, the thing that I want to see is is does it encroach upon the other building up there as it takes space from the other building? No, the gate that's uh, currently there, uh, the one chain link would move back approximately 15 feet and tie into the corner building that's there already. Uh, it already blocks it out. The fence blocks that gate or that back doorway out as it is. Okay. So it's just mainly moving that gate back and everybody's the same other than, like I said, that's where they open it up at. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm uh, speaking on behalf of myself and the sheriff's department. We're interested in uh, trying to get some problems from the county to open up for us a shooting range to qualify with the weapon issue. I understand that you spoke to uh, the attorney about it and it's, that we keep disturbing ground at the old landfill on all the county fair road. That's fine, but I just, I'm not putting this in motion or anything. I just like me and you and maybe Danny and some of the others to get together and possibly uh, work out some grounds somewhere we can do this at the end. Feasible for everybody and uh, not control anybody's property or their home. Definitely me, but uh, we, we've been through this for the past year. But, uh, my, the problem is up there, if we start soil, then we got, we're, we, we can't start soil on that landfill side. Well, the county is still obligated for the, I guess, the post-closure uh, process of that. I'm not saying that it's not a possibility, but you can't do anything that would violate any kind of, uh, or disturb anything that would, you know, violate those procedures. And I know that if we get a ditch line in there, we have to we wouldn't believe what could create an issue up there. It's a perfect site, but it's it is, I know. But we we will take a look at some alternative places. Where does the city go out there? Where we have to visit. Wherever we can. As as over on the city and county, wherever we can. When I took my carry permit test, we went up somewhere in Ohio. 
the Winfield. Winfield. Yeah, Winfield. Okay. Okay, that's that's the property there has changed hands, yeah. and they could have stayed right where you used to qualify. So there's no there's no room up there anymore. And we've used the Big South Forks in the past, and we had to start buying their ammunition because we could shoot lead rounds into the grain. Well, I think they changed that now. They what? I think they changed that now. Yeah, but we need to go to the So you go to Campbell County or somewhere like that now? Yes, sir. Last time we went to Campbell County. How much, how much does that cost? I think it's free. I think no, it's I'm talking about that. I'm talking about Going over there and taking the time and all your officers over there praying and stuff. Sure, it costs more gas to drive it somewhere here in the county. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say that it's not a possibility that you could not use the landfill area because there's a lot of area there. Yeah. But what I would recommend is that you know they come in periodically to check twice a year. You know when they're coming in. I'm not really sure. I know they told us the grass apparently got about waist high. He come and told me, he said, you know, I take grass mowed twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall. And they just come a month or two ago, I think. There's a bad side to that landfill that could possibly be used. But what I would, well, what I would suggest is that we coordinate when they come to check it the next time to talk to them and see if it could be used. Because there's one part of that landfill that really would not, if it was used, would not really disturb, you know, what they're concerned with, in my opinion. But we would have to make sure that they were okay with it. Is it some, is it some way that we could contact them? For the next six months, we've probably got your information. Yeah, you know, and ask them to come up and talk to them. Thank you, sir. I'll email them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 There's several papers. Okay. And that gentleman that does the reports is always will help with this. The state people that come here every day. And when they check it, you know, just they can see. But you may send an email to them. No, we're oh, looking yeah. forward to see if that would be a possibility on oh, any yeah. part of the land. Any part of it. Yeah, maybe perfectly. It'll be a request. I think there's a good one for it. Yeah, it's just a pistol with a shotgun and a rifle. But I think the range over there that we're looking at right, is probably maybe two acres, maybe. It's a 50. Over there, they have a 50 yard range, 100 yard range, and 150 yard range. Back, 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 back. What about the public lifting off? Is that what about the public? The, what about what? The public. Well, I'm sure there'll be some liability there, but if the county can make money off of it, let people rent it. I don't see why it'd be a problem. I'd be looking at the public lifting off of Talking about, oh, you're oh, talking yeah. about away from General Public? Yeah. That's, oh, you're talking about the Noah's aspect. Yeah. That's probably as good an area as and less remote area than anywhere around. You know, basically you got rooms right down below you there. And, uh, the, uh, if you're up there in the middle, I don't know that you're going to start being you know, on the back of that. Let's see if it's an option. Department. They said that uh, that department was 
one that did, really didn't get uh, used as much as they wanted it to. Uh, this, all this is, is just a little more made, but everything else is the same, just like that we always had. I put a copy of last year's resolution in your papers there. We just need to. Yeah. And also, uh, I was going to tell you guys that you can move money like that uh, supplies telephone, the second one there. That includes the feeding, the inmates, and gasoline. Yeah. And like I move money from the salaries and benefits to it when it gets low, you can move money to wherever you need it. Except for education. Nope, can't touch education. To move into it, which can't move out. I just need a motion. Motion is second. All in favor? Any opposed? Are we motion is second to see the full commission or just? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then second on the agenda is the solid waste board new members resolution. We had uh, two members of the Solid Waste Board that resigned due to their workload. So this is just the resolution that I said I'd try to get done that has the new members and who they represent and when their terms in. Uh, the last one we had, we've had several others when we've done this twice that we've resigned, so we need a new resolution showing the new members and their terms. And I just need a motion for it too. I'll make a motion to the board. I'll second it. A motion and a second to send it to the full board. All in favor? I'd like to address it before we do that. Okay. Uh, and I don't post any of the opinions of people that's on this right now. You know, we are good people. But I really, really feel that uh, somebody from this county commission ought to be serving on that, uh, on that board. Uh, and I'd like to ask somebody between now and the next meeting to possibly step up and, and serve on that board. But other than that, I'm done. If anyone would like to, all you've got to do is call me. I think one of our members is going to have to step down, another member for family uh, sickness and stuff. So let me know. Let sure it's wrong? Yeah. They passed a, in this time that we needed an elected official. On the board, it's all the way to it. Mary Ann, how often do they meet? We meet at first Wednesday every month. And it's like 11 30. That's why it's so hard for everybody. Can, if, if it's a possibility, Mary Ann, to, to you know, to skip the meetings, how to keep them or something like that? I mean, I'm not board would have to approve that. But, right. But, uh, you know, it's nothing personal against anybody, but I just feel it. Well, I've always asked, good. you know, when you've mentioned this, I've always asked if it, one of them is to, but no, I never. Are you on this? Well, we got to say, we, won't, we can send it through to the full court. It's got to be, I just asked if somebody, you know, and then if the other member does add Robbie's change, the resolution will bring it back. Okay, so I've got a motion and a second to send it to the full board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Number three on the agenda is the monthly update on litter pickup. Um, the litter crew went to all districts this past month. Uh, we did over 74 miles of roadways. We didn't have no dumps that we picked up in April. Uh, a lot of the time, we spent on trying to get ready for the litter pickup. But they still done 74 miles of roadway. Also, uh, speaking of the uh, educational part, Tammy has went to schools. She went to the Huntsville Elementary and read to the kindergarten and the first grade. We take pencils, all kinds of stuff to them. And they love it. They do, we send a, a little coloring sheet. And they do those and we bring them back. Some of them here, some of them out on the walls out there. She also went to the Agape, Agapa school and they were three and four years old. They loved it. The book we had was a little bit too long for them so we have got books for smaller children now. 
and she's going to go back up. And they did a color paper, color in sheet too. They really, really enjoy it. And she really enjoys it. So I just wanted to update you there. Is that something if we call her that she'll come out to the schools and do? Yes, yes. And we're going to, we are going to get to every school. Okay. Starting yes. And we're going to try to do some of the things too, like if they have, you know, even in the Bible school or something like that, you know, we're going to try to do stuff in the summer too. Okay. But yes, just call. Yes. Does the state produce any information like the movies, you know, like the movies, clips, or whatever that they could provide? Well, not, they've not told me. Yeah. And we had the thing on education. We really pushed it when we went to the training, but they didn't say they had anything. <laughs> they do have, like, for Dr. Highway, you know, and stuff like that. They have them, but they don't have it. That would be a good project for one of the schools, the high schools to do, like a drama class yes. or something like that. Yes. I'll mention that to somebody I know. <laughs> and actually, uh, the lady that's in the agriculture office, she said there's uh, someone who works at the Boys and Girls Club who wants to do a summer thing with recycling and all that stuff. So we're going to participate in that too. I told her that we would buy the containers for them, you know, for so that they can learn how to recycle at summertime this year at the and bring stuff like that too. And I forgot that. I'm glad you mentioned that. So we're going to also, that Mary, too. I would like to say about the roads, since the last two years, this year was so much cleaner or there was not as much trash out on the road and you can tell what you guys do by picking up the garbage once a year I could tell a big difference from last year to this year. Since it's Tim's been there the boys they really have picked up a lot of stuff and too it helped us because they gave us two more boys so that means four picking up instead of boy it's working. Yes yes they're very proud they've really done good I'm proud of them. They're going to gun for it tomorrow. <laughs> Anything else ready for this committee? Do you have a motion to adjourn? Motion to second. Thank you. Motion second. All in favor? Okay. Good luck. We're going to have a recess. 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 That's it. Fine. Okay, next we have uh, Budget Committee, Trent Crosshairs. So we're, Mr. Mayor, we're on uh, board recess for another day, so that's the reason I guess we'll take a minute so we have a okay. okay. And you want to have some comments May the 12th at 10 a.m.? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll move on to the Intergovernmental Committee unless there is any questions. Did I hear anybody? Somebody say something? Moving on to the Intergovernmental Committee. Uh, call the Intergovernmental Committee to order. Uh, David Lee Banks. Here. Mark Stills. Here. Hey, Brown. Here. Jim Jeffries. Here. King Chad Lowe. Here. And Mike Slayton. Uh, only one thing on the agenda is the Blue Crest Tree. Yes, sir. Last weekend we had the deluge of water that came down, uh, Sawmill Road collapsed, the entire width of the road is gone, it's still sliding, uh, I just went back down there today and another two feet has slid off uh, about 30 feet over the bank, 40 feet maybe. Uh, the road department came out Tuesday, I believe it was, or Wednesday, and moved their road over onto my private property without permission. Uh, I stopped them at the time. Me and Mr. Sexton uh, came to an agreement that he would present a purchase uh, opportunity to you guys to purchase the land they moved the road over onto. Uh, the road was it's a county road, it's supposed to be county maintained. Uh, Mr. Sexton said he was not going to fix the, the slide, which I don't blame him. But I don't want to give up more land to fix this problem. If somebody needs to buy the land, 
to move the road over or close the road. I mean, the road would be officially closed if it's not purchased. Do you, are you asking for them to buy whatever they moved over yes. and took? Just to that park, correct. go down to the spot on it. Uh, There's about 20 to campers, homes down there, two or three that people need to get to, right? There's 20 different landowners uh, that are at the base of this road uh, before it hits Brimstone Creek. Uh, there's six houses down there, cabins, houses, multiple different campers, uh, folks have put in. But there's a water line down through there now, powers down there. Uh, folks bought the property with the idea that there was a county road there to gain access to it, but uh, now there's not. How do they get to the, how they get the house and stuff like that? They haven't yet. They haven't moved it back now. The water department just moved the water line over that uh, first, whenever the slide hit. Uh, so has the road been rebuilt now? Or it's it's on me, yes. yes. But it is, it, it's on me. Yes, temporary. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. So Vic has agreed to bring it to the court and has us to buy the property. Is that right? Right. Lee and I, luckily, were at Slip and it's probably said what? About two down the hill. I mean, this, this, Quite a bit. Yeah. This road left. Yeah. I mean, it had this big slip and it left. So I went down and looked at it and it's probably 40 feet foot deep. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Probably it might be deeper than that time we got that to it. And so luckily right there where it happened, there's a little wide place between that and the high wall where it stripped. So I called Lee one day, yeah. one day anyway, and I told him I said, we're down there making a road around the slide, go down and look at it, okay? And he did, and he called, or my operator called, one to come down, okay, what we agreed on, and hopefully that's going to hold in there, and I don't know. I mean, there's no way that I can fix the road that's there now. That's just out of the question. I mean, it's very, very, very expensive. Okay, so Lee and I come up with the idea, the area that we put the road on, we changed over. And Lee told me, because I asked him, I said, what will it cost me an acre? He said he'd been selling some property on that side, I think it was $3,000 an acre. So him and I had a handshake. And you don't hear that no more handshake making a deal. But I had to get the houses, the trailers that was come down there at the old cemetery before you go across the creek, Grimstone Creek. My concern was getting them in and out or whatever. Okay. So Lee and I, so what we decided we would, and, and we hadn't ever fully decided how wide I was going to go, that the high wall behind it, and I said, Lee, We'll probably go to the foot of that high wall in case this breaks out again. And we'll agree on that. But once we get to what I think we need, and we're going to have to survey it out and leave one three thousand dollars an acre, will it be a half acre there or leave if that probably well seven half. And what I'm gonna do is the court to buy that. And I told them it would be after the last, the next court meeting, which is the third Monday this week, he could get his money, I mean, the third Monday this month, then he could, if the court went ahead and bought it, then that's when he would get his check. The money part, that's not an issue, it's so that it's surveyed and it's recorded. Right. So that it doesn't keep moving one way or the other. Uh, and I'm not saying it's not being <clears throat> moved, but that's a big old field there and it's gone now. Hey, Lee, is this the property? I know the sun's shining and you're all nice back there. Yeah. But is this the property about six years ago that, that you wanted closed and we voted not to close it? Correct. That's the same piece Correct. of property down yes, over there. Now, we went through that about five, six years ago, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. yeah. I think, I think. It's I know a, all about that. Yeah, I think it's a, uh, it's great that you can work this together and work it out. As well as, you know, I appreciate you working with the road department and you know, getting this worked out. Because there was really no other option 
and it was probably it was an emergency situation, and it probably wouldn't have mattered either way whether you had won it or not. It could probably have been declared an emergency situation. That had to be But I'm just glad y'all got together to work it out. Yeah, well, you know, we weren't trying to push the product nowhere on the back of it. And like, jump up. I make a motion to see the full court. Okay. I ain't got a motion to say any more discussion. I guess that'd be a survey around there. I'd have to contact him and survey to them and survey. That would be an additional expense. I don't think it would be a lot based on what Mr. Sexton has described to me. Uh, or I that would be an expense for the county. So. I would say this. It's going to save the county a lot of money by doing that. Because you're looking over here, probably three hundred or four thousand dollars if you were there trying to fix that slide. So we need to buy that piece of property as a county. And the price is more than three thousand dollars an acre. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to be how much it's going to end up being. But I'm telling you, the slide is long, it's deep, it's wide, a lot of money. You know, I, I don't know how we how we never be how we can never be. I just have one quick question, and I'm, I'm all for the deal that you made for him. Um, if we buy this, though, I mean, will it continue to slide off where you're going to go around? I mean, are we going to be continuously looking at, at that possibility of the of this slide? It's a very, uh, him and I talked about it. It's just like the iceberg. It breaks off, it's going to break off again. We don't know. But that is where the, it's got the high wall behind it. And it's probably it's more on solid where they took the coal out. I would, I would think the coal would be wet enough. Yeah. And chances are it is. I mean, it looks good now. Only choice we had. And, well, uh, Lee and I talked about it. I think it may be solid more back there. I'm not saying we won't go in there and do more work. Right. But, but if it does slide back to that high wall, there are no options at that point. No. Unless you buy them out. No, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of slides on television. That's, that's the worst one I've seen during this one we had on television. On this talk. Okay, now something else I want to ask you. Ginger, Mayor, John, somebody. You all purchased this piece of property from Lee. So, okay, I would like to get kindly when he could expect his money. I know it's after survey. We'll get survey done before. I mean, I'm contacting the county surveyor tomorrow. Yeah. We get surveyed, but then after the court meets, the third Monday night, and like Lee said, money's no problem. But I want to stand up to my grant because I told him that's when it would be decided. But how long after that, if the court decides to buy it? He's got surveyed to see exactly what that's going to be. Yeah. Because yeah. it's based yeah. on $3,000 per acre. Yeah. But we're going to meet on the third Friday, the uh, third Monday. So how long from that third Monday? And we all need a matter of when he can get there, get in there and survey it. No. I would like for both of you to be there. You know, we're yeah, we will be. We will. Uh, Lee and I both will be there when we survey and make sure. We just have to take a look at your budget and see what you get in there. I said the county. I started to say, is this coming out of your budget? It's all out of the county budget. budget. No, from our general fund. And I think that what they need to do is go ahead and pay him as quick as they get this Yeah. Uh, and get the surveyor to come in and do this survey and then decide how much he can land right. that we're taking from him. And if Andrew can get the paperwork ready, I'll sign the check. Like I said, the survey is going to take it up. Yeah, it's yeah. it, 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 not, it, it won't take Jim Reed two hours to survey. I mean, it's a very small spot. Clear as it is. So, I, sir, I, I just sir, make whatever you think you need. Right. And, and it may come to a hydrant acre, I don't know. But we have no choice on that road. I'd say the same survey on the next time check. I'd say the same survey on the next time check. So, we're not what we're going to do. I mean, what I'm not going to do is, all right, we're going to wait on the survey for two months before they get his money on the next time check. No, I won't take you to the survey. I'll take you to the next time check. I'll take you to the next time check. I'm contacting tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Motion second. All in favor? Any opposed? Anything else for you to go down to me? 